Yes, 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 yes. We can go ahead. Mic check one two one two. One two one two. Okay. Whenever you're ready. You ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, everybody, we want to welcome all of our Facebook listeners and those who are joining us today right here on Joy 1340 AM and 98.7. I'm Pastor Walter Owens, and I got to put up with, oh, God, here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go again. Let them, just let, let Owens know who you are. Pastor Charles Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, man? <laughs> you get me every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause Lisa, Lisa, uh, uh, I engineer Sean gave us a time to uh, uh, let you get yourself together here. Are uh, you ready to get started? I'm ready. I'm ready. ready. You are. Okay, okay. Well, let's let's, let's get let's get going here. Let's Amen. get going. Amen. Again, we just want to welcome all our Facebook listeners and those who are joining us on the phone. You know, Pastor. Last week was a crazy, crazy week, man. What? It was a crazy week, and uh, looking at what's going on this week, you know, we was uh, sharing with our audience last week uh, when we was uh, reading from our sister Jackie Dotson's, the author of More of You, God. I think what we need to do is continue with more of you guys for this month. I, would you like to? I think like that'd to be that? great. You know, a lot of uh, good uh, insp inspirational words in her book. You know, and uh, one thing that we were sharing with our listeners last week, the bottom line is we need to make a change in our lives. We need to realize what's really starting to happen around the world in our country. You know, we need more of you, God. Yes, you know, we do. Yes, so we do. I want to start our uh, broadcast, our show off this week, Pastor. I got a question for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. You got your seatbelt on. I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. buckled in. You're ready buckled in? Okay. Well, if you're buckled in, I got a question <laughs> in, and that is does history repeat itself? You know, it does. Huh. You know, according to the Word of God, you know, things continue to repeat itself each each century, you know, mm. because of the different troubles and things that have been introduced throughout the years and generations, mm -hmm. they still have a way of coming back around full circle. I know, and, and you know, scripture, uh, I saw something uh, before we get into our uh, sister Dachshund book uh, for a foundation, but uh, I saw something, Pastor, over in the book of uh, Ecclesiastic, uh, uh, what is that? Chapter 1 at verse 9. Chapter 1 verse 9. Uh -huh. The book of Ecclesiastic. Uh, tell me when you get there. I mean, I, I, I should have gave you a heads up, but okay. God just led me away. Uh, uh, you know, Ecclesiastic 1 and 9, that which has been and what will be, that which is done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said? See, this is new. It has already been in an, in ancient times before. There is no remembrance of formal things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. Again, my question is, does history repeat itself? And you know, according to the scripture we just read, it lets you know there's an indication that it does. Come on now, come on, you Pastor. Know, the word tells us there's nothing new under the sun. So if there's nothing new under the sun, that means it's something that already had taken place before. Amen, amen. You know, because uh, uh, now we can get over into the uh, book, Sister Dotson. Mm -hmm. I want you, if you if you're there, Pastor, I would love for you to read. Uh, January the 13th, and I'm going to read January the 14th. Okay, all right. 13, mm -hmm. January 13, it says, Heavenly Father, the more I praise you, the more you reveal yourself unto me. Uh -huh. Lord, as I bask in your presence, you are stripping off those characteristics that aren't you. Thank you, Lord, for removing depression, anxiety, bitterness, envy, poverty, selfishness, greed, laziness, and hatred. As I see more of you, I have a heart of forgiveness, love, patience, joy, peace, endurance, and perseverance. 
I know through you there is nothing impossible for me to accomplish. I want to go higher and higher with you, Lord Jesus. In order to grow and change my ways, I must have more of you, God. Now, what did you get out of that? You know, this is a, a, a prayer of surrenderance. That's mm. what I look at it as because we're giving ourselves to the Lord even though we do have some characteristics of the world, you know, that God has defined, you know, through his word over and over and over. Mm -hmm. But in order to be cleansed from those things, we got to be willing to surrender you know, ourselves to the Lord. And the Lord can strip those characteristics out of our lives and replace them with the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Because in our meeting, uh, Pastor, you, you was mentioning uh, about something over in the book of Mark. The yes. book of Mark, uh, what was it? Mark 9 and 23? 9 and 23. Uh-huh. Book, book of Mark 9 and 23. Why are you going there? I, I'm going to read from the New James Version. You got it? Yeah. I'm there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It said, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. You know, and that is so awesome because this is was dealing with the, the, uh, the child who was filled with the demonic spirit of death and dumb. You know, and, and Jesus, when he encountered this, this unclean spirit, he spoke to the father of this child and said, if you only can believe, it will be possible he can be delivered. Okay, so my question again, what does that have to do with, does history repeat itself? You know, because only God has the power and he has the ability to change things in our society today when we come to a place to line it with his word in agreement with okay. who he is. Oh, okay. So in, in other words, uh, times and events happens and it's a part of a continuous stream. You know, I see here where it's written, it says Solomon pointed, points is again that God is the perfect control of both time and its event. Yes, he is. And he can seek out and bring back into extinction in the presence that what happened in the past? Does Solomon come commend commend comment comment, comment uh, again over in Ecclesiastes? It is parallel. What has been and what will be, and what has been done is what will be done, and there is nothing new under the sun. Amen. And then he says in plain language, history repeats itself. You know, so the same thing that our ancestors had to endure is not as the same degree of the things that happened back during those times, but it's a different format, but the same issue. Well, so in other words, I saw it sounds like what goes around comes, comes around. around. Absolutely. Okay, so this is this is new, nothing new under the sun. So everything that we're witnessing in our time that we're living has happened before. Is yes. that is the way? Yeah, absolutely. I know you mentioned, you know, in our meeting about how, you know, back in 1900s, uh, uh, it was in 19-something. It was where, the 1800s. When, 18, where the capital was yes. violated in the same way it is today. That lets you know history repeated itself again in the same format, but you know, in different format for the same methods. You know, people still are aggressive, still rising up against authority, still kind of want to make their opinions be, be across the hearts of the nation, you know, because it's what we want and we want to get what we want done now. So, w how would you share with our listeners that we need to put God, more of you God in this? You know, the way we need to do that is surrender. Go back to surrender. When I surrender myself to the Lordship of the Lord, the Lord can change your thinking. He can change your attitude. He can change your behavior. But in order, in order for that to happen, if thou can believe, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. and, so, and it gets back to the Word of God. You gotta believe that God has the power to do what you want him to do in your life. I love that, Pastor, because I'm really just going back to uh, more of you got what Sister Dotson wrote. Yes. Heavenly Father, on, on uh, January 13, Heavenly Father, the more I praise you, the more you reveal yourself unto me. That's it. Lord, as I bask in your presence, you are stripping off those characteristics that aren't you. Yeah. So, man, we need to get more and have a more insight on who we are. That's See, it. I think we have lost our identity, Pastor. I think we really I have agree. lost our identity on who we truly are. You know, and, and, and this is not, this, 
broadcast today, we're not talking about anything political or giving our opinions on, on what people are doing, but what we're trying to share is what we need to do as, a, as men and women, children of Christ. We need to, to bash in his presence. We need to start looking at things for what they truly are. We do. You know, because, you know, we, we are, are a divided people. And I'm, I'm saying from good and evil, we are totally di divided because uh, Ecclesiastic 315 is an uh, illustration that shows the breadth and the depth of God's sovereignty over time and events in our lives. You know, you know, I'm just looking at this here. It's a picture that more clearly we have to perceive time as a moving reality. Mm -hmm. Help us with that. Moving time as a... In other words, it keeps pro keep progressing. You know, time doesn't cease. When it says we have, have to perceive time as a moving reality because our reality, it doesn't end. It keeps going on. It keeps lingering. It keeps reproducing itself. You know, and it, it reminds me of God's creation when he talked about the tree how the tree has seeds in it, but he said the tree only produced after his own time. Mm. In the same society, the same methods, the same mindsets that the people had back in the 18 and 1900 is the same thing that people have today, but to a more degree of aggressiveness and more anger and more malice and hatred because it's intensified in the reality to it now it's become more, more boisterous, you know, because it's magnifying itself now because of the heart has turned from God and not to God. Amen. Amen. I got to give you an amen on that one. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Because, amen. You know, that's powerful. Yes. What you said, the heart yes. have turned away. Yes. Have turned away. And that's yes. what we need to, is to get back to who we are. That's it. You know, we are an angry generation. We are. You know. And God called it desperately wicked. He said the heart of man is desperately wicked. Jeremiah 17, I think 17, 9. He says that he said no one knows the heart save God, and he said he will render to every man according to the fruit of his doing. So God knows that without Him in our hearts, our hearts is just going to produce wickedness, you know, and that's going to be the identity that we pattern after because we we turn from the Lord, and that's why you know it, uh, uh, what is that Second Chronicles seven fourteen? If my people will call by name shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive the sin, and heal their land. God can't heal the land until the people get a heart to come back in unity to return to him. Amen. Amen. Look at this here. Uh, one might wonder why God would essentially repeat what is said in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9. Just two, two chapters later, the reason is that there is a major difference in the content, content mm -hmm. in Ecclesiastes. The statement is used negative. Come on now. Mm -hmm. The statement is used negative. negative. You know, and... Oh my God! Look, 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 look! Go, go, go with me, Pastor, right quick. Mm -hmm. Back over here in Ecclesiastes three fifteen. I want you to read this and go down to. Oh, this gets deep. Oh, to yeah. what we're doing right now. I think we was talking about that earlier in our meeting. Yes. I want you to read, uh, explain Ecclesiastes three fifteen, uh, and go all the way down to eighteen, eighteen okay. nineteen. And it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15 through 19. Uh huh. Okay. It says, That which has already been and what is to be has already has already been. Uh huh. And God requires an account of what is past. Moreover, I saw under the sun in a place of judgment, wickedness was there, and in a place of righteousness, iniquity was there. Can you stop right there? Mm hmm. More in 16, moreover, I saw under the sun. We were just talking about earlier. Uh, there's nothing new under, under the, sun. the sun. But mm -hmm. then you, you went on to say, in the place of judgment, wickedness was there. Yeah. And in the place of righteousness, iniquity was there. Yep. Come on, come on. And you know, and because of that, that, that wickedness and, and that, you know, and that iniquity goes hand in hand uh -huh. you know, because they're both spouting out evil, you know, rebellion, stubbornness against God. So when he says in the place of judgment, there was wickedness, that's just outbursts of wicked, of sinful activities coming from the lives of God's of, of people, 
even God's people, you know, we, we fall in the same pattern. Because if we're not prayed up and not surrendering ourselves on a daily basis to the Lord, what's going to happen? We're going to find ourselves in the same mindset of wickedness and unbelief. But then it goes on and says, And I said in my heart, uh -huh. God should judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time for every purpose and for every work. I said in my heart, concerning the conditions of the sons of men, God tests them that they may see that they themselves are like animals. Whoo, that's deep. For what happens to the sons of men also happens to animals. One thing befalls them as one dies, so dies the other. Surely they all have one breath. Man has no advantage over animals for all its vanity. I know you got something on that. That is deep, you know. <laughs> so otherwise, what do you you say about the we at we at this point in our life we acting like animals? Animal autistic mentality. <laughs> and the reason why is because the lack of love for God. When you don't have true love in your heart towards God, the Bible tells us if you love God, you're gonna obey Him. Uh -huh. we, we're not obeying God. We're obeying ourselves. We're doing what we feel is the right thing to do according to our own standards, our own dictates, our own belief systems, and we're leaving God out the equation. Yes. You know, and this was Solomon was talking about. He said there's nothing different between an animal and a man. Why? Because they're same. they both are aggressive. <sighs> let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. They got to soak in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do, but I saw <laughs> something that, um, January the 14th. Mm -hmm. It says, Lord, I'm despaired for you. You are, you're all I need to get me through any and every situation. People come and go, but God, you are always with me. I cast out all loneliness. I know you are always here. Holy Spirit, you are my comforter. As I follow this unique growth track, you have planned for my life. You keep me on track, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for placing a cushion all around me so when the enemy attacks me, he bounces right down to the pits of hell. No one weapon can stand up against me. When I'm in your care, I'm condemning every weapon, Jesus. You are my protector. I praise you for who you are, Lord. I just need and live for more of you, God. Now, what I love about this here is that God is always with me, and he casts out yes. all loneliness. Yes. So it sounds that, Pastor, is that history does repeat itself, and what goes around come around is a lot of times when we have outbursts, when we are on the tank, there's some loneliness that is going on the inside. That, that, it, it is. You know, it's something that, it that in the interior of one's self mm -hmm. that there's a, there's a lot of darkness that's happening. A lot of darkness that is happening. So how would you share with our audience is to allow more of you, God, in your life. Get rid of, of uh, what's going on having a better insight on when things come around uh, that we will be able to freely through Christ, freely through Christ is to put up that shield, that wall. Uh, what, what would you, I know that's a good one. You know, uh, one, one, one uh, suggestion that I would give to any person, you know, that's listening today is to really get to a place of examining your heart. You know, examine your heart to see where you are standing in your relationship with the Lord. Uh -huh. And then not only that, but allow the Holy Spirit to change your thinking. You know, because a lot of this outburst and rage things that happened this past week is because of one man's influence. One 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 they say one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. So one bad apple influenced a whole bunch of people to ride against our capital, which caused a lot of confusion and vandalism and different things that took place. But we can change that when we turn back to the Lord and allow him to change our thinking, when we start responding and not reacting according to the flesh, but react according to the spirit. Okay, now, I want to say this here, and I want, I want, 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 want you to hold on to me. I ask you, did you have your seatbelt on? I'm, I'm going to say something, and I hope I, uh, our listeners get it. What we witnessed last week was a political move. 
Yeah. Right? Right. Now, I want to get into the spiritual move between darkness and light. Mm -hmm. You know, because we tend to think that the former days are gone forever. However, Ecclesiastes 3 shows that this concept is totally true because history keeps repeating itself. In fact, we are learning that God causes this re uh, repetition, verses 15 confirm this fact once again, but it adds a positive twist to it. Why would God do this? Other, I'm, 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 I'm saying that to say this, Pastor, is that let's, let's, let's not focus on, I hope they get this, let's not focus on what has happened at mm -hmm. the Capitol. That is what it is. Right. They're going to take care of that. God is going to take care yes, of that. But how is God going to take care of us? And how are we going to understand what God has best for us? Getting in his word. Come on now. See, that's where I want to go. I want to yeah. go. I don't want people just to focus on the mm -hmm. things that is going on and right. you making a big issue out of it. Because once that is settled, you that's still it. are going to be lost in mm -hmm. who you truly are. That's why I said earlier, Pastor, we got to be able to conform to what's inside of us. Yes. We... Uh, I love when you say, don't hide your heart. Yes. You know, we, we need to m have more of you, God, right yes, now. Right now. And, and, and God long as, right. And long as we focus on the things of the world, we're going to stay there. But what did God say about you? Right. That's my question to mm -hmm. all of our listeners and mm -hmm. everybody. What did God say about you? And how are you going to... Uh, receive when things come around when history repeats itself you gotta already know what goes around come around but you cannot stay there in that situation you gotta allow the change to take place in your heart come on now because he loves it he calls it his, his children his bride his security he said we're security we're his chosen generation royal priesthood a holy nation that's what god calls us you know and so because he calls us this now we have to get to the place where we believe it for ourselves and walk in the truth and righteousness so we really don't even know who we are. We don't know who we are until you get back to the place of listening to God's voice. And that's what I want our listeners to do, is get back to God. Receive more yes. of God. Let God, uh, 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 when we was reading earlier in our, our Sister Dotson book, it said that he was a confidant. Yes. You know, yes. so yes. all the things that is going on, you need that cushion. And yes. that cushion is the soul of Jesus Christ, that which he yes. put yes. in yes. all of us. Yes. So that's where our focus should be is on more of you, God, that's more it. of what he said. Didn't he say somewhere, Pastor, the battle is mine, it's not yours? That's right. So what are we fighting for? We fighting a war that we don't even know anything about. Because of ignorance. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I, I love this. We're going to have to continue this here next Amen. week. You know, this, this is really good because there's a lot more in this here does history repeats itself in other words what goes around come around yeah. you know Pastor, before we get out of here i just want to thank uh, our dear sister uh jackie dotson for a powerful book of more you god and um yeah. i want as we always do i want you to pray 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 i said prayer pray and give us a word of encouragement amen so i just want to encourage you all of you who are listening today to stay encouraged and keep your mind on jesus everything will be all right mm -hmm. so lord we ask that you cover every person who heard this word today father that, that it penetrate in their hearts and bring them to a place of enlightenment of your truth and your righteousness that they walk by faith and not by sight in jesus name we pray amen amen and anyone that would like to receive a copy of more you got uh, by author jackie dotson you can go to god's divine journey dot uh dot com and you can get it on Barnes and Noble and Amazon and eBay. eBay. So we want you to, to get this book and we want to thank all our family that join with us every week right here at Joy 1340 AM and 98.7. God bless you and we love you. Amen. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you. Um, we might want to do the same one we had last yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then that, that, you know, 
that that would be good. We could use the uh, same one from last week. Uh, I, I do have a question for you. Uh, 